Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question Maximum Profit in Job Scheduling. In this question, we have n jobs where every job is scheduled to be done from start time to end time, obtaining a profit. Now, we are given the start and the end time and the profit in the arrays and we need to return the maximum profit that we can make such that no two jobs in the subset will overlap the time range. Now, there is a condition given to us that if we choose a job that ends at time x, we can start the another job that start at time x. So in the first example, we can see that the first job ends at time 3. So we can start off the fourth job right at that point of time. And so we are getting the maximum profit, which is 120. And similarly in the rest of the examples. So now let's see what the question is all about and what are the ways that we can use in order to solve this particular problem. Now this is the start and end the profit array is given to us in the first example and this is how the diagrammatically it will look like and as we know that the answer to this problem is we use these two particular jobs and we see that these two jobs do not overlap when the first job ends at 3 the next job starts at 3 the total profit in this case becomes 120 which is 50 plus 70 doing it manually is not a difficult task. Now we need to come up with an approach where we can solve this programmatically. So let's see that we have two times given to us in this particular problem that is the start time and the end time and we can use either of the two in order to find out what will be the result. So let's first discuss how we can solve this using the start time. So suppose we have one job with us and then we have another job. Now these two jobs do not overlap and we can use both of these jobs in order to find out what will be the maximum profit. So let's focus our attention only on the first job right now. We can have two scenarios for any of the job present to us. It can either be selected or it can either be rejected. If the particular job is selected, that means this job with a profit 50 is selected. In that case, the profit would become 50 plus the profit after or equals to the end time which is 3 in this case. The rest of the profit after this end equals to 3 plus the current profit 50 would become the profit that we can get if we start at 1. And similarly, if we do not select this particular job, then the profit at this particular job would be equal to profit after 1. That means at least starting with time equals to 2 and that way we can find out the profit. We will find out the maximum of all these profits for all the jobs and then we can return the maximum out of these. So if we write that down into a set of instructions, we first sort the jobs with the start time because as we will be going sequentially from every job to the other job, we would need the start time smallest to be processed earlier than the start time which is at the end of the job scheduling. Now for every job there are two scenarios either it is selected or it is rejected. If it is selected the profit becomes profit of I plus next job after the end else the profit becomes next job after start plus one. Now the max of the two profits will become the profit starting with this particular job. We can store that somewhere. We will talk about how we can store it and everything. And the third point is we find out the max of all the, these jobs and return what will the maximum that we are getting. So now let's turn our attention to how we can solve this using end time. So in the case of end time, we again have two jobs. Let's suppose that we have already computed the result for the first job and now we are on the second job. This is just to make things easier. And the second job in this case is either selected or not selected, similar to what we did in the start time. So if the job is selected, then the profit becomes 40 plus the profit before or equals to 5. And if this job is not selected, then the profit becomes profit before 10 because we are not selecting this job. And any job ending at 9 can be used to compute the profit. And if we write down into the statements, it will still be the same. Things just change a little bit in the case of a selected and not selected. In this particular video, we would be looking at how we can solve this using end time. You can always apply the same solution for the start time as well. So let's start with the end time. And this is the input that we had at the start. 
Now in this case the start and the end time both are sorted so we can call it as an special input but that won't be the case for other input there may be jumbled. Now the, the end time is sorted we'll start off with the first job that we had with the start is 1 end is 3 and the profit is 50. Now we are seeing that at time 3 what is the maximum profit that we can get. So at time 3 if we select this particular job the maximum profit that we can get is 50 plus all the jobs ending at end equals to 0 or any job that is ending with end equals to 2 and we take the max of the two values. So we see that we do need one value wherein we store that what is the maximum profit up till that particular time. We will be storing the highest values in this map. So at the end time 0 the profit will be 0 and in this case we find out that the profit 50 plus 0 becomes 50 and so at the end time 3 the maximum value or the maximum profit that we can get is 50 and we'll store that into this map that we have created. Now let's move to the second job. In the second job we have the start is 2, end is 4 and the profit is 10. So we again search for the job which has a maximum profit which ends at at most 1. So at most 1 up till that we have end time is 0 and the profit is 0. So 0 plus 10 the max profit till 4 becomes 10 because we cannot use the job 1 in this case as these two are overlapping because the first job is not ending before 2. Once we have this value that the profit is maximum equals to 10 at the time 4 we see that can we put that value into the map. We cannot put this value into the map because there is a higher value residing in the map right now. So the end time is 3 and the profit is 50 that will be the maximum value. Now let's move to the third job. In this case the start is 3 end is 5 and the profit is 40. We try to find out any job that ends at 3 and we find out that the job exists which is 50. So we the maximum profit becomes in this case 50 plus 40 which is 90. So we do add that value into the map which is 5 comma 90. Similarly, we move to the last job and here we check any job that is ending at 3. We find out there is a job that ends at 3 which is 50. The maximum profit in this case become 120 which is higher than the last value present in this map or the highest value present in the map. So we put this value 6 comma 120 and this value 6 comma 120 being the highest value in the map is the value that is the highest profit that we can make from this particular set of inputs. When we apply this logic, we will be able to figure out the result. It will be much more clear when we code this particular approach. So now it's time to code this. So we'll first start off with creating the data out of the start time, end time and profit so that we do have all the data in one space. So the simplest method to use that data is to create a 2D array. So there will be n elements where n will be start time dot length. Once we have that, we can put all the data into this jobs 2D array. Now that our data is complete, we had two approaches. We can either go with the start time or the end time. Now in this case, we will go with the end time. So we need to sort this array based on end time. So we'll use the inbuilt arrays dot sort for that sorting this jobs array we will be using a custom comparator and the second value of this array is the end time so we will sort according to that ascending order once the array is sorted we need to find out for every job if it is selected what is the maximum profit if it is not selected then what is the maximum profit so we need to store those values into somewhere so that we can use the previous value like we saw that we used a map and in this question we would need a map wherein we can find out the value which is less or equals to the particular start time. So which map provides that functionality? So tree map does gives us that functionality wherein we can find out the keys which are less than the particular key provided because tree map as we all know has all its keys in sorted order. Searching any value in a key map takes log n time 
as it uses binary search internally. So we would have a tree map and we know that at the end time zero, the maximum profit that we can get is zero. So that is a base value that we need to put in this map, which is zero comma zero. Now for every job that we have, we need to perform some functionality. Now herein we need to find out a value or the profit that we get. Now this value is if this particular job is selected, then what will be the profit? So the profit in this case would be as we all know, the profit of this particular job and the maximum profit that we can get before the start of this particular job. So we need to find out what is that value. So we need to find out the key if existing in this particular DP map. So we need to find out the highest value that is lower or equals to the given provided start time. So to find out that value, we have a method for that, which is called floor entry. So we will use that. We provide the start time over here and we then get its value, which is get value. Now, as you know, we need to put this val into our map only if it is a value greater than the existing value. We have already sorted all the end times and now we are going in the sequential order. So every key that we put in into the map will be put in at the end of the map. So if this current value is greater than that and value, we need to put this new job end time with the profit into the map. So we do a check over here. If the well is greater than the DP dot last entry dot get value. Now these are some of the methods that the tree map provides us by itself. You can look them up and try to use them in your code. It will really help you in speeding up your development. Once we have that, we can put this value into the map at the end time. So the job end and we put in the val into this particular position. We saw that the last value is nothing but the highest value that we can get. So this is the value. So we can directly return dp dot entry last entry dot get value and that will do the work for us. So the coding part is done as we are using a tree map. We need not to take care of all the searching and everything. The tree map does provide that in built. We are doing a sorting over here. So that is n login and then we are using for n elements finding out the value is login. So that again becomes n login. So now let's try to run this code for all the sample test cases. Now let's run this. So it runs successfully for all the sample test cases. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity in this case is n log n that we discussed. Well, the space complexity is n because we're using a jobs array for that. You can also solve this problem using start time. The approach will remain pretty much the same. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.